Hello Creative Cooks, welcome back to another episode of the Creative Phoebe Cooks channel. I'm Phoebean and today I'll be sharing my top tips when growing your own sprouts at home by making mixed bean sprouts with no special equipment. Sprouting is an effortless and a budget-friendly way to boost up your diet with antioxidants, anti-inflammatory properties, plant protein, and super greens to brighten up any meal from sandwiches to stews whether it's the summer or the dreaded winter it's also a stress-free way to prepare fresh greens over the weekend or during your meal prep session that way you can add it to your meals over the course of the week later on in the video i'll be showing you how long one of these legumes grew when i left them in somewhat okay conditions beyond a week completely unattended and unknowing to me. All right, I'm gonna start off by preparing a clean mason jar and getting my choice of legumes to sprout. I'll be sprouting a combination of legumes that happen to grow at the same rate and for that I'm opting for a tablespoon each of whole green peas and green lentils and a tablespoon and a half of whole chickpeas. Other greens that you can sprout include quinoa, mung beans, adzuki beans, broccoli seeds, alfalfa and so much more. If it's gonna grow in the ground and produce seeds, you might as well sprout it, but check to see which one is best for you because they all have different sprouting methods. Make sure the legumes you use are whole and not split. I haven't had much success with sprouting split grains. After sorting through the grains to remove any small rocks, rotten or broken pieces, give these grains a good rinse with spring water or filtered water Keep away from using unfiltered water if your water system is compromised so it doesn't negatively affect the growth of the legumes. After that, fill up the jar with rinsed legumes with fresh spring water or filtered water. I'll be saying that interchangeably. Set it on your kitchen counter and allow it to soak for 8 to 12 hours or preferably overnight. The larger the legume, in this case, the chickpeas are larger than the other two grains, the longer the legume will take to soak, so it acquires the amount of moisture it needs to start the sprouting process. If you've been watching my videos a while now, you've seen my garden and can probably tell that I am a proponent for growing your own food. No matter what it is, even if it's an herb garden, even if it's just one herb, period. If you'd like a guide for that, let me know in the comments section below. This year, I'm learning all about growing sweet bell peppers and ginger, among many others. The peppers have started blossoming and I'm very excited to harvest my first batch of sweet peppers in about a few weeks. If you're new to growing your own plants, sprouting is a great project to help you master growing plants from seed. And if you have kids, this is a phenomenal way to teach them where their food comes from and how plants grow. And watch them ask for sprouts every week because they love eating their platter of leafy greens, right? If you're loving this video, let me know by giving it a huge thumbs up to help other creative cooks like you find this video easily. And also, let me know in the comments below on your experience with sprouting your favorite grains. Or, if you're yet to do that, I'm looking forward to seeing all of it, and thank you. On the next morning, or after 8-12 to 12 hours of soaking the grains, the grains would have doubled or tripled in size depending on what you are soaking. Drain out the water from the jar and rinse the grains one more time. Here I'm sterilizing a set of muslin cloth I've used previously to sprout grains. I'm sterilizing them in hot water 
that way it can prevent any growth of mold if you're new to this product i have a link below to one of my favorite muslin or cheesecloth made with a hundred percent cotton that is very versatile in the kitchen and beyond it's beyond sprouting it's also beyond cheese making check out a link below for yours After securing the muslin cloth on the jar's opening with a rubber band, place the secured glass jar over a wire rack or a ramekin in my case. Place it at an angle to drain out any excess water. This will be your spartan station for the next few days. It should be undisturbed, not in direct light, and should be well ventilated for clean airflow. Like the seeds you sow in fertile soil, make sure the grains in the jar are well drained over the rack or the ramekin. If they are waterlogged, they will gain too much moisture which will make them rot and not grow. Cover the jar or jars with a cloth to keep away from light while allowing room for air circulation. On the next day, which would typically be 12 hours later, so if you're doing this in the morning, the following time that you water them would be in the evening, and then you repeat that the following day. So, in this case, on the next day, observe the seeds to see if they've started sprouting, and make sure that no mold is growing. Fill the jar with fresh spring water or filtered water, swirl the filled jar to clean the seeds, drain, and return to the sprouting station at an angled position. Repeat this step about two to three times a day, depending on your weather conditions and your environmental temperatures. If it's too hot and dry, give them more rinse, but no more than four times. Typically, I rinse them twice a day, and that has worked for me fine. Also, if the surface on which the excess water is draining on, it's, you may find that it's a bit slimy, wash it and reuse it. Continue the rinse and drain process twice a day, any time between 3 to 7 days, depending on how long you want your sprouts to grow and your preferred taste of the sprouts. You can taste the sprouts starting on day 3. They're safe to eat. The longer they grow, the more complex they taste. Green pea sprouts especially tend to be more fibrous with increasing growth, especially after the first two leaves form. So for me, the best time I have a stem would be about day four or even as early as day three. Green lentils and chickpeas will be just fine. And all three of them would have grown a root and a shoot system. And if the first two leaves are visible, they will be yellow. And at this point, the shell of the grain would start falling off of the sprout. Did you know that mixed bean sprouts or sprouts in general contain more nutrients that are more bioavailable to us than their matured versions? Let me know in the comments below. Once these sprouts have grown to their preferred length, empty the sprouts in a large bowl and clean them about two to three times until the sprouts are clean. Then drain them in a sieve or fine mesh colander to drain them properly before storing them. For these sprouts, in as much as they love water to grow, water is their enemy when you have to store them. So the more they drain, the better. If you need a foolproof reminder to add mixed bean sprouts to your diet, consider downloading my meal planners and write it down. Write down what days you prefer to have sprouts with your meals. That way you don't forget. If you're just a busy person and you don't even want to think about what you're going to eat, get a meal planner. It will save your life. And if you need help creating a meal planner, sign up using the link below for an online meal plan coaching session. You'll be glad you did. These are definitely a staple in my weekly meal prep session. I already have a new batch soaking for this week. Now here's a tip. 
if the sprouts have their first leaves already, feel free to let them air dry close to direct light. Not in direct light, just close to it. They expose them to natural light for about a few hours and you'll notice that the leaves will turn from yellow to green which means that the chlorophyll in the leaves are being activated. It's just such a fascinating process. Now, if they're drying out while you're air drying them close to direct light, spray them with some fresh spring water to keep them looking fresh and perky. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, here's a lentil sprout I found this past Monday night in an unexpected spot in my kitchen, my dishwasher. I was shocked to see how long it grew and I know it survived because it was not waterlogged because you know, dishwashers have a pretty good draining system. It also had a pretty good airflow and was away from direct light. So. I wasn't even planning for this, but if you're looking for it, that's a quick summary of the conditions that are needed for your sprouts to grow without any special equipment. There you have it. Now, if you're not using these sprouts right away, line a clean storage container with paper towel and place the well-drained sprouts in it, then top with another dry paper towel. I know this video is about sprouts, but you can use this same storage method for mint, dill, basil, and similar herbs so that they keep looking fresh for weeks in your fridge. Try it out and let me know how it worked out for you. Seal the storage container with its lid and keep refrigerated. This helps to keep the sprouts looking fresh and maintain their crunch factor because that is so important with these sprouts just like with fresh greens. Here's some lentil sprouts I harvested a few days prior to filming this episode. These are still looking fresh and crispy and I use them as a lovely garnish for the chickpea burgers and the plantain lasagna recipes I shared a few weeks ago. I have a link for both of those recipes in the top right corner of this video you're watching right now or you can just search for these recipes on my YouTube channel or on my blog at creativephoebe.com. You can have mixed bean sprouts, raw or lightly cooked in your stir fries, stews, soups, used in place of matured greens, or here's another tip, have it as a tasty ingredient to add to your juices. You gotta try that. Let me know. I'm yet to try it, but it just sounds so cool. You might as well do it if you're gonna use kale to do that. Taste-wise, they taste very mild, but also strong. It really depends on who's tasting it. They also taste a bit milky. Hmm. Also depends on what you're pairing it with. It will taste different if you're using it in a salad compared to having it in a soup or even a sandwich. It really depends on what you're pairing these sprouts with. The next step after sprouting is growing microgreens. Sounds amazing. And that begins to make things even more interesting. So I have to say that for another video. If that's something you're interested to see, let me know in the comment section below. There you have it, Creative Cooks. This was quite an in-depth chat about sprouting, and I am super excited for the batch I have going on right now. If you prefer to make single green sprouts instead of mixed green sprouts, use the same method as I explained in this video and you'll get the same results. I just like it a bit complex. That's why I made mixed bean sprouts, which is an added way to, you know, jazz up all these nutritional factors you get from different components of food. So there you have it. 
a low cost and delightful way to make your meals more interesting and an innovative way to grow your own food any time of the year check this out especially during the winter months when you don't feel like going to the store to get fresh greens will you be given this sprouting method to try let me know in the comment section below where we can continue this conversation you may find a full recipe on my blog by using one of the links in the description box below i appreciate you for tuning in today and i thank you so much for watching creative cooks we'll chat again soon have a good one